Welcome to Dodgers Daily. Casey Porter here, joined as I am each and every Friday by Coach Holt. Going to have a really exciting day today. Exciting show. We're going to talk some Dodgers baseball, no doubt about it. We're going to have some prospect talk, though. We're going to talk some relievers that I think have a good chance at making their Major League debut next year. Ricky Venasco, John Rooney, Alec Gamboa, and the like. So Mark Washington is also another one that we're going to watch and tune into today. So super excited about that. Welcome in, Coach. Thanks, Case. Great to see you. Always look forward to Friday mornings and getting up around. And uh, always love talking Dodgers. Always great to see you as well. You're retired, so I'm sure you I, you love talking Dodgers baseball. We love talking to each other. I'm yep. sure you look forward to that. I'm not quite sure you sold me on you're looking forward to waking up, though. It's funny. When I was younger, it would take a bullhorn, an air horn, would wouldn't wake me up. But <laughs> here I'm retired. I could sleep a little later. Still get up the same time I did when I went to school. I always wake up same time every morning. So, And I found that sitting around doing nothing isn't much fun. So that's why I got back into coaching uh, and probably continue to coach as long as I'm physically able. And, and baseball it is, about pioneer baseball, something you and I both love. So, yeah, I saw your uh, video yeah, the other day. It looked like great. you guys – Looked like you guys were getting after it. Okay, hey, not necessarily totally Dodgers related, but kind of is. The Phillies, they they got beat in both games six and seven at home. And kind of like the Dodgers, their big dudes didn't hit. And that's why they lost. Hey, man, it just kind of goes to show you in the game of baseball. We talked about this. that It's not really controllable, you know, once the game starts. And if your dudes don't hit, there's not a whole lot you can do. And they're not about to get rid of the top three right there. I mean, yeah, uh, they didn't hit. You know, I mean, I love those guys. I always, you know, uh, you know. I mean, what are you gonna do? You got Bryce, you know, Bryce Harper, Trey Turner, who we yeah. all loved. I wish he's still in Dodger blue. You know, and uh, I don't know. Their top three is just is just good. But yeah, what do you go one for twenty four or something like that? You I know, think the last two games, something like that. Yeah, one for twenty eight. Yeah, whatever it was in the in the in the, in the last two games. And, very similar to what the Rangers did. I mean, of course, the Rangers and the Astros, a home game, home team never won a game in that one. It's strange. And this one was almost pretty much the same way. Well, except the Phillies won the first two. I was really kind of pulled for the Phillies. Of course, we love JT Realmuto. You coached yeah. against him. I so have I uh, from the from the fam, uh, the famous Smith wrestling family. And we know what, what kind of makeup he's got. So I was kind of pulled for the Phillies. My brother-in-laws are big Philly fans. So I just kind of pulled for them and, but, uh, you know, you give credit where credit's due, man, the D-backs. And it, it, the D-backs are a team like we, we talked about. I, I've always liked the D-backs. Yeah. I mean, They're hard not to like, aren't not, they? Yeah. If, it, if we're talking Padres, I'm out. You know, yeah. I, I've just got some, some feelings there that I, they're like the Astros. I just don't have a whole lot of feelings towards it. But the D-backs got some – and I think their manager said it well, Lavolo, the other day. He said, hey, I'm glad the country's getting to see our players now because we don't get to see them on a daily basis. And uh, they got some outstanding young players, and and uh, they're, they're very deserving where they are, just like the Rangers. I'm kind of some people are you know downplaying like, hey, you know, who cares, man? They, they're the two teams playing the best right now, and they proved it on the road. So more power to both of them. And of course, I'm pulling for the Rangers. I started pulling my Ranger pull pull over out today, but I'll, I'll hold that for later. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Pioneer shirt, by the way, Coach. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's very nice. I'm sure you got that as as courtesy of. The new baseball program there, getting you getting you some nice gear? Yes. This is actually Coach K with the new football coach. Okay, nice. It's one of their coaching shirts. I wasn't coaching with him, but I'm helping out on game nights because I couldn't get there in time from retirement. But, uh, yeah, Coach Lees is getting us hooked up. You loved it last night, Case. Some of your former coaches, Coach Tafee was in the house. Nice. Coach Bischoff was in the house. Nice. Uh, came back to, to see and I got to go up and say hi to those guys. They had a big part of my life. I know yours, too. It was great to see those guys back at Pioneer Stadium and get recognized for what they did there. And, and they're both coaching some baseball with us, too. Of course, you know, Adam Bischoff is, is in your grade. I coached him. And a lot of great memories when I saw those two guys. So, Pioneer Blue was kind of flying last night. And I know you got a lot of that in you, too, yep. as well. Some Guthrie Blue Jays. We both go the same way there. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay. <laughs> so, I wanted to mention that. I saw that shirt. I thought that was cool. So, the Diamondbacks, you know, you kind of hit on it with the Padres, the Giants, you know, kind of like as an Oklahoma State fan. Just can't root for OU. I just can't do it. I just can't, no matter what, I just can't get myself to do it. But there are teams, you know, other teams in your in your conference that, you know, hey, you have respect for and you kind of give it up to, and you don't have the same amount of animosity towards. That's kind of where I fall with Arizona, you know, when it comes with, with both the Giants and the Padres. Even when Bruce Bosch was with the Giants, as much as I dislike the Giants, 
it was hard for me as just a baseball guy to yep. root against him because he's such a great baseball dude. If that makes any sense, and I hope that doesn't, I hope that doesn't just blow up. You know, all my fans that that are out there that are watching this. You know, so from an Arizona perspective, and then from a baseball perspective, them playing the style of baseball that I like, it's been really hard for me to root against them since they beat the Dodgers. I, I feel the same way. I, I, I guess we're both out. I always had a lot of respect for Bruce Bochy. He's a Hall of Fame manager, and he's you know back with the Rangers. He's the first guy to ever take three teams, three different teams, to World Series. So kind of goes out saying a few years ago, uh, my wife and I, about five years ago, went to Arizona. We loved going on spring break time, spring training. I went to the, the D-backs facility, watched him and the Dodgers play. So, of course, that was about five years ago. So it wasn't the same team, but some of the guys were there, and I, I just kind of liked them. But I, I texted Coach Lee the other night. Marty Lee is our high school coach, Division One coach who's, who's come back to the high school level. Great baseball man. Division One head coach, him. by the way. Yes, yeah. he's our yeah, he's a Division One <laughs> head coach. And at Oregon State, they won a national championship. So, a great baseball man, great guy. Loving working with him. I texted him the other night. Uh, before the fifth inning, we'd seen uh, two or three uh, sacrifice bunts already with the Phillies and the D-backs. I said, isn't that funny? Because we work on it every day with our high school kids. Technique, where we're bunting, why we're bunting, how we're doing it. And, and I just thought it's funny. You, never, you don't see that much in the major leagues, hardly any at all. It comes down to game seven. The Phillies are, you know, sacrifice bunting. The D-backs are sacrifice bunting. They're trying to win. I told yeah. them, it looks like they're trying to win tonight. I just kind of said it facetiously, but, you know, that's that's a part of the game that's kind of gone away. But the D-backs, you know, did it. You know, Carroll's an outstanding player. You know, Coach Lee said he was the first one that offered him when he was at Wichita, Washington State. He said, of course, then UCLA came in and I was out. You know, yeah, that's where right. he ended up going. But he said, he's a little bitty kid. Everything you hit went out of the ballpark. So he had high, high, high respect for him. And he's proven on the major league level, too. So I love – I'm like you. I love baseball. I love the Dodgers more than any other team in baseball, Major League Baseball. I love good baseball. And, and the way the D-backs are playing right now, and the Rangers, uh, they're playing the game the right way. They go on the road. You can tell they're playing for each other. I yes. think that's something. Major Leagues, they become little kids again. Yes. Yeah, they're all millionaires, but they become – I'm playing for my guy. I, I'll never forget when Matt Holliday came back when they, the Cardinals won in 2011. We had Matt Holliday, Brett Anderson, Josh Fields back in the house, kind of celebrating the Pioneers around the big leagues. And that's the year the, the Cardinals had won the World Series. And, and I'll never forget, oh, Matt said it's true. And you already knew it, but he goes, we were playing for each other. We didn't care who got the credit. And, and they come out of a similar situation. The Cardinals come out as a wild card that year, yeah. right at the end of the year, yes. they even got in. And they won it all. So we've seen it before in football, the wild card team, the Giants, you know, knocked off the Patriots that year. And when it, the Patriots were undefeated, Giants never played a home game once the playoffs started. You know, so we've seen this. I love seeing multi-million dollar players, whatever sport it is. You know, the way they come together as a team, they play for each other. Just what we see on the high school level when they become kids again. Just they just want to win. You know, and, and it's fun to watch. They just want to win, and and uh, it's hard not. to – I'm like you. I, I, it's hard to not root against the D-backs, but my number two team favorite's always been the Rangers. So yeah. I have to go the Rangers, but it's not because I hate the D-backs. I won't be totally disappointed if the D-backs won it either. Yeah, I would agree. That's it's gonna. I think it's going to be a very fun World Series because, yep. to me, the intrigue of the Rangers trying to win their very first one and then you have the D-backs who are just this up-and-coming, probably maybe at least a year ahead of schedule, if not two or three years ahead of mm -hmm. the schedule they probably set for themselves to be in this type of position. So I think it's going to be an exciting World Series. And we'll see from there. And, hey, the Dodgers had a lot of that team camaraderie this year. We saw it all the way throughout yes. the year. We saw it, you know, as they would get on base and at the beginning, and then they would do the Freddie and all that. So I thought the Dodgers had a lot of that this year as well. I thought they, they, you know, they had a lot of fun playing this game. I think Dave really loved this group of guys. So I think we saw that from the Dodgers as well. Okay, Coach, so before we move on to our prospect features where we talk about some of the relief pitching that I think has an ETA for next year, Okay, so give me your wish list for the Dodgers. Of course, this is something just popped up the other day. It's always had in the back of my mind. I love Nolan Arnauto. I, 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 I read a thing the other day that that's a you know there may be a possibility of the Dodgers. Of course, the other part is you know what do you have to give up to get him? You know that's that that's and we talked about it. I'm off the Otani deal. Trust me, if if he shows up at Dodger Blue, I'm gonna be happy and I'm gonna love it. But. Uh, I'd love to have Nolan Arnato as far as outside the organization, what we're doing. And, and, and you just hope and pray that Gavin Lux comes back, you know. And, and the way the surgeries are nowadays, he's a young man. I'm sure he'll come back better than ever. 
you know, but we still don't know if he's, you know, going to handle the everyday shortstop deal. We know he's a great, great talent, uh, outstanding young man. So you're, you're praying for that. But, you know, there's not any big shortstops out there. So my wish list, I'd, I'd love to see Nolan Arenado playing third base for the Dodgers. And, of course, like we said before, like uh, uh, Friedman is talking about, you know, he's always looking for top line pitching. Yes. So, you know, I, I think that is big for the Dodgers. I love their young kids. We, we, we you know, talked about that every, every episode. I love their young guys, and, and they're, they're just ready to burst on the scene. Hopefully, they're in Dodger blue and they burst on the scene. We don't have to trade them away. And they <laughs> or we don't lose them to the, the Rule 5 else. draft, like we're going to talk about with yep. these relievers. Yeah. Yep. You know, that sort of thing. So, you know, top line of pitching, you know, I think it's a must. The Dodgers, if they, if they can get a top line starter. And uh, like I said, just a personal deal for me. I love Nolan Arenado and – he was here working out with Matt last year up at OSU. Working, you know, had some video of that too. So, I'd lo- I'd love to see Bellinger that, too. See him and, yes. Oh yeah, Bellinger. Oh my gosh. He uh, came to Stillwater and worked out. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, he did. Yeah, they were up there at the high school. They were at the high school at Oklahoma State working out. Matt's uh, becoming quite the hitting coach yeah. with, with his former teammates and colleagues and, in the major league level. And he's he's uh, of course his his boys are outstanding. You know, Jackson's getting ready to probably be in the big leagues next year. Close to it, he's with a great organization, the Orioles, and and Ethan's on our team now. He's ranked as the number one kid in the class of twenty twenty five, and he's more like Matt. He's six four, six five. Yeah, kid, and he's going to be be huge. But Matt's you know uh, turned in quite the hitting coach. I hope some major league team don't pick him up, but I think he enjoys sitting here watching his kids all, after all this time of doing that. But yeah, that's that's some guys. You know, like, that'd be a big wish list. You know, I I know that. In the off season, a lot gets done. It's more the trade deadline where most of that big stuff kind of takes place. But there are some big deals that go in the off season. But uh, that would be one I'd like to see. But who knows if they jump up and you know pick, can get the best player available and something happens when somebody wants to get. I know I'm sure all these organizations want to get their hands on some of our yes of our young pitchers. I, I was kind of shocked. I don't keep up with the Astros. They talked about the other night when they were getting beat. They kind of said their their farm club farm system is it is it strong? But they did a great job of the ones they had come up there that they won the World Series with, and they're still there. Yeah, but I guess they're as a whole. Kyle Tucker and that group was the yeah. last really good crop for them, and they've yeah. and they paid it off pretty well. Yeah, oh, it's paid off big time for them. But you know, there's not really anything behind them. I think the Dodgers, you know, have have been consistently good. Of course, historically, the Dodgers have had a great farm system. I think that goes to the organization, the people in charge of that area. And they still do. I know a lot of people. I'm sure any any trade talks that Friedman makes, any of those phone calls, the first things pops up, some of those pitchers, obviously. And uh, you hate that. But, you know, at some point, can you get them all? Are they all going to be able to pitch at the same time? Probably not. So, you know, at some point, you're going to have to part probably with somebody we really love here and you just hope they do well and don't beat us in the World Series, you know, something like that. Good thing about those pitchers is when they call and say, hey, we, we, we're looking at some of your pitching, the, the first thing that, that Friedman can say is, hey, which one? <laughs> because yes. there's there's certainly plenty of them. I saw the other day, you know, they talk about maybe the three Dodgers who would get traded. And the last one I saw kind of was sad as Gavin Stone. You know, I was like, hey, man, you know, yeah. I'd lose him. But, you know, I guess he would be a little bit more attractive because he does yeah. have some major league service and, Emmett you know, Sheehan would be very attractive. Emmett Sheehan, absolutely. You know, that's some guys that probably, you know, obviously Bobby Miller's not going anywhere, but you'd hate to see Sheehan or Stone or any of those guys, you know, disappear on us too. But it's and Grove really business. hit his stride with his, you know, kind of that two-inning relief guy. Yep, yep. So it's the Dodgers have, have some leeway. You know, they've, they've got some, you know, they've got some things they don't want to part with, but, you know, they also got to look for the president on the big mm-hmm. league level. So they, they've got to do whatever they got to do and, the nature of the business is you hate getting rid of the great people, but sometimes you have to. And the Dodgers have some cash that that they're going to be. You know, they yeah. they've untied some cash this year, and the the fans aren't happy, and I'm sure the front or, uh, yep. front office isn't happy with the early exits. So this just smells like a huge off season to me. I mean, this smells like an off season where finally, you know, like last season, all the Dodgers fans were, were upset and rightfully so. Hey, didn't get enough pitching, didn't get enough this, didn't get up that. And it played out to be that way, you know, and and so I think this just kind of smells like everything's setting up perfectly to have a huge off season. And I am I'm of the opinion Bobby Miller is the only untouchable. He's the only one that Friedman will go, hey, okay, you want some of our pitching? Fine. You can, you know, we we'll negotiate Everybody except for Bobby Miller, he's off. He's he's off limits. I think he's no, the only one to make that comment with. Yeah, because he has he has. You're right. He has that star power. He has the 
potential, which we all know this means he hadn't done anything yet, but yes. he has the potential to be a top line, number one starter in the major leagues. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Yeah, you know, we're not going to talk about Miller going anywhere. And as much as you like to keep, you, they'll be able to keep some of those guys. But I, 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 I'm like you. We got a lot of guys on our free on the free agent list. There could be free agents after this year. A lot mm-hmm. of big names on there. Some mm-hmm. on the back end of their career. Kershaw, Hayward, some of those guys. And I guess Muncy's on there, too. A lot of guys that could be free agents. So I could I can see some tough – there's going to be some tough decisions made for Friedman in the group. But like I said, I'm, I'm in his – I'm in the Andrew Friedman fan club. And, and, and yeah. I'm really a Dave Roberts fan, too. You know, whatever happens there. And, uh, it's a hard job. It is. I think. Well, he. I think this year he might have been the manager of the year yeah. in the regular season because of what he had to go through, and not a lot of people would agree with that. You know, sure we're mad because we got beaten or first round we was playing again, but you know, I'm whatever. mad. Yeah, I'm mad. There's more, to, but there's more to it than that. I think Friedman said it best. We talked about it in the last episode. If there's one man that caused this, we'd get rid of him. You know, but it's all of us. It's an organizational failure. I think's the word he used. So, uh, you know, it's you know it. Unfortunately, a lot of times the head guys are the one that goes immediately, but I think it's obvious Friedman's not not making that call now. You know, I I hate seeing Dusty retire. Yeah, Dusty's an old Dodger and uh, love it for him. The, oh, I love it for him. He goes off the sunset with his toothpick and his sweatbands on, and his Hall of Fame manager career. Uh, Dusty's a Dodger. He's one of those guys with four guys hit thirty homers that year. Started out with Henry Aaron at the Braves and. Mm-hmm. Great baseball man, and from all indications, a, a great guy and a, and a great manager, a player's manager. And I know I saw a deal earlier in the year, him and Bochy, before the season started, were set down. They had an interview with both of them, a lot of respect for each other, been around each other, played against each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. And managed. But, uh, you know, kudos to Dusty Baker on a great career. Go enjoy it. Get the fishing pole out and enjoy the grandkids and great grandkids and enjoy life. Uh, yep. Former Dodgers always stay close to our heart, but, he, you know, he's another one. Didn't like the Astros, but I love Dusty Baker as a manager, so whatever. And he's even with the Giants before that. Yeah. That was a hard one, too. But, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it kind of zero animosity season. towards him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just a great baseball man. And, you know, congratulations to him on a great career and enjoy it. Every Early time time. I see his toothpick, I always think of UL Washington. You remember UL, don't you? Out of Hartshorn, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Down about, down around your your area. You probably heard about him pretty well. Not exactly, you know, from where you're from, but fairly close. Yeah, he was, you know, he was Stringtown, Oklahoma, kind of southeast. He was like the first guy ever coming. The Royals used to have that baseball academy. He would he would have that toothpick in his mouth when he played shortstop for the Royals. All the time. Yes, he did. He He was a heck of a player. They were, that's back in the heydays of the Royals when, Brett and all those guys were young, and Frank Wives the second base. Willie Wilson, UL. Willie Wilson in center field, and had Darryl Waddy Porter a catcher from Southeast High School yeah. in Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah. Daryl Porter, you betcha. Those were uh, great times. And uh, again, I'm like you as a baseball fan. I used yeah. to love those guys. Either those Oklahoma guys too. Yeah. I was talking about that the other day, and I always patterned myself out after, after Johnny Bench because I was a quarter chalk tall and I was from Oklahoma, but. That's where it stopped right there. I sure couldn't hold seven baseballs in his little hands of mine like he could. But if you're ever in Binger, Oklahoma, you've probably been there, Casey. Oh, yeah. Great little museum. Binger Oni. Co- connected to the, uh, to the, I always say, to the insurance yep. office. <laughs> well, that's how we had to go through the back door. And the guy <laughs> let us in from the city office, and the people came back from the insurance office for months, turned the lights on, looked at us. So it, it, it's just yeah. the small, but it's a great little museum. John yeah. just put a lot of stuff in there. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff in, into a little museum. If you ever, and you don't just get off and go to Bingo. No, you kinda gotta you're going there. there. Hinton. You're going there. It's kind of <laughs> like Fairview. You're actually going there. Get off there to Hinton. Stop the casino if you like that and keep going. You'll come to Bingo, yep. Oklahoma. And if you ever end up out there, if you're a baseball fan, which I am, it was good to go to. It's an awesome museum right there downtown Bingo, which is not hard to find. If you yeah. Can to Binger. <laughs> Johnny actually built them a brand new press box for their baseball stadium, which is super, super nice. Just saw it uh, just a couple of years ago, so he is yep. still very connected back. He's from a town Absolutely. called Binger, which is a very small town. Matter of fact, Binger, the town he's from, is so small that their high school actually had to consolidate with another small town right next to them named Oni. So now the school is named Binger Oni. So yep. very cool. You know, that this is a small – the, yeah, Johnny Bench is a cool, is a really cool story. But hey, we're gonna we're gonna get back to Taj, Dodgers baseball. Sometimes Coach and I get off, we start talking about baseball. You never know where it's gonna end, so that's super fun. Hey, let's get into some of our prospect talk. You ready for that? Okay. Yep. All right, let's get to it. Let's not waste more time. Let's take a trip down on the farm. All 
All right, so we're going to start with six foot five left hander John Rooney out of Scaticoke, New York. Had a very good year, coach. They actually moved him to a two seam and a, a we're going to see in here a two seam and a cutter and then eventually as the season went on so they ditched the four seam they ditched the change up as the season went on they actually added his change up back in great extension elite pickoff move he's had he's had control issues in the past there's that good cutter but last year he did a really really good job of keeping the baseball in the strike zone and actually had a really really good year for AAA Oklahoma City so excited about John Rooney actually ERA 286 69 strikeouts 69.1 innings just 22 walks on the year so John Rooney he's a guy that's rule five eligible so the first thing you got to do is you got to somehow get him on the 40-man roster or you're going to lose him yeah, we can't can't afford to lose that guy. Get nothing in return. <clears throat> I, I like his arm action. Watched him throw. You see so many big guys. You know, me being an old baseball guy like yourself, you know, and we don't mean being much older than you. I don't mean it that way, but you know what I'm saying. Old school yeah. baseball. You know, see a lot of these guys that what I call it throw across their body. You know, that sort of thing. They're they're he's got some cross fire to him, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. But you look at his legs. I mean, he's pretty much in a straight line when his lead foot hits. And, you know, his arm's in a good position. I mean, fundamentally, you can see – I could see where at some point in his career he could be wild. But yes. know, watching the video of him now, he's pretty much in control. His body's – he's got a big body, 6'5", I think he is, and he controls it pretty well. Uh, it's, it's obviously been a work in progress. The Dodgers have spent some time with him, and, God, I'd hate to lose it. You know, yeah. you, you can never have enough left, especially coming out of the pen. And a guy, especially with a great move guy on the pin he's always got, more than likely he's going to come in with guys on base unless he comes at obviously the start of an inning but there'll be a lot of situations guys on base and just the threat of the good move is just as good as picking people off it's kind of mm-hmm. like if you can fly in your great bunner as we all know as soon as that guy comes the player everybody goes nuts me mm-hmm. as the manager is getting all pressured up going crazy and telling you third baseman watch the hand i mean it changes everything and if you got a lefty and everybody knows he's got a good pickoff move that kind of shuts down something all you need them to do is you know, shorten up a little bit over there on their lead. So, you know, the, just the threat of the pickoff is just as good as, as doing the pickoff. So that, that's that's a guy you'd like to keep around, especially with, with the pin. Our, our pin had a great, you know, postseason, but they're not getting any younger either. So you don't mm-hmm. you, know, you don't know how the, the free agency is going to work on that too. So hopefully we can get him on the 40-man. Yeah, was a former starter, was always a starter, went to Hofstra and was actually a starter all the way up until last year with the Dodgers. They transitioned him to the pin. Oh, a couple of about a couple of starts into last year, and he is really he has really really liked that role. He's he's a guy that that you know loves adrenaline. He's a guy that's a really heavy thinker, and so yeah. being able to just kind of sit in the pin and analyze the game, and then get that adrenaline of the big moments. He really feeds off of that. Actually, he picked off Jose Altuve earlier this year when Altuve was on a rehab assignment with Sugarland, Texas. So that was really cool. Heck yeah. I love that already. <laughs> Anytime you pick off out too bad, I'm with, I'm with you. Yeah, I've had a chance to talk to John on to communicate with him fairly regularly. He is like the he's like the energizer buddy. Matter of fact, you know, I saw a video of him the other day just working like heck, like two days after the season was over. And I was like, dude, do you ever stop? I mean, do you ever get any rest and relaxation in the off season? And his exact comment back, coach, was, Hey, I can stop when I'm dead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I like him already. That's a that's that bulldog mentality. Of what you want, and, and and he can smell it too, Case. I mean, he's 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 been double A, triple A. He's one step away from the big leagues. He knows what's in front of him up there. They they've done some things with it, you know, like you said, the two seam, four seam, the change up. So the Dodgers have plans for him. You hope they get him on the forty man, but he can smell it. Mm-hmm. He's not about to stop working now. It's too he's too close to the to the major leagues and where he, where he's always wanted to be, where everybody wants to be. So. Yeah, it sounds like he's an outstanding young man. Hopefully, uh, we get to keep him. The Dodgers don't typically prioritize, as we saw this with Gus Farlin. They lost him last year. The Dodgers don't typically pri- prioritize relief pitching because they feel yep. like they can get it on the cheap. So, it, between him and the guys we're talking about today, here's Alec Gamboa, the next guy we're going to talk about. Okay. It will be a very interesting decision. And here you see, right, you saw a pitch that got away from him. If Alec Gamboa, you know, the, if I were to say what one thing does he have to work on, he has to get the ball 
in the strike zone consistently. When he does that, he is simply fantastic. So it'll be really, you know, an inter- I don't think all these guys are going to put on the 40-man. Ricky right. Venasco, we're going to talk about <clears throat> later. He actually, I don't think, is eligible for the Rule 5 because he was DFA'd twice this last year. But but, but uh, Washington, Mark Washington, who we're going to talk yeah. about, Alec Gamboa, who we're seeing here, John Rooney, who we just talked about, all three eligible. So it'll be interesting to see there. But, hey, this is Alec Gamboa, Coach. He is from Madera, California, which is the Fresno area. He is a three-sport star. He was a all-state wrestler. He was a, kind of that H-back, do it everything on the football field, and obviously a great baseball player. Just to give you some background, he went to Fresno State out of high school, and then in between his freshman and sophomore years, he, he actually went and played baseball. When he came back for his sophomore year, came back to find out at Fresno State he did not have a scholarship waiting for him nobody had told him about it so he's like well what do i do now so he actually had to go rent an apartment in fresno california on his own dime and he's like you know what the heck with this i don't trust the situation so he went across town and he actually instead of he transferred from fresno state to fresno city college to where Mm -hmm. he went and played for i believe his name is ron hill who is the winningest coach in the history of California College Baseball, just a tremendous program there at Fresno City College, where he played with, you'll remember this name, Coach, Christian Funk. You remember Funky there at OSU, yep. who had such yes. a great career. He played with him there at Fresno City College. And if you and then what happened to him as he is pitching there, the Dodgers kind of recognized him. His family is massive Dodgers fan. He is a huge Fernando Valenzuela fan. I just started to say, 34, yeah. it reminds me of Fernando. That's exactly why he wears that, that, and he is very proud of that. His family is huge Dodgers fans just beyond him, so to become a Dodger would be a a huge deal for him one day. And the Dodgers actually, the way he got signed, they invited him to a workout at Dodger Stadium. He went to that workout. He absolutely killed it. They loved him. They offered him a contract, and away we go. Alec Gamboa was a Dodger. So tell me what you see. He, I know he, he's about ninety six. I think if I'm not yes. mistaken, he reached as high as ninety nine this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, you know that's that's a plus right there. I like his motion again. But you you told me all I need to know about him. First of all, wrestler. You know, yeah. That's you know I don't care if he's anything good at it. If he's got that mental capacity to be a wrestler, uh, and and like you said, he, he's a three sports star. He he got slapped in the face at Fresno State. Went right across town and got something done and. And and I love the fact that he's a Dodger fan for life. And he, there he is. The first thing I thought of when you showed us is that thirty four Jack Fernando, if he wasn't <laughs> staring up the sky when he before he delivered. But uh, the guy's got some good good arm action because he got velocity. Like I said, just get him in the strike zone. But you know he's obviously a good athlete. Uh, and I don't know. I, I just like the story you just told me about him. I think it's all you need to know. I can see where the Dodgers love him. First of all, he's going to jump out because he's got the arm to begin with. But knowing what he's gone through, and he's, there he is still, you know, and he sees, again, much like Rooney, but probably even more so, uh, you know, this guy's close. He, he he can smell it, maybe the major league level, and you hope that's definitely one you hope you keep because he's a lifelong and his family's lifelong Dodger fans. But, you know, again, it goes back, like I said about Rooney, you, you never have enough lefties. And, you know, this guy, this guy brings a lot to the table. I, I just like the way he throws. I mean, but with it, I can't even hear anything. I can see it in, in just the way he handles himself. He's he's a bulldog. Mm-hmm. He's another former starter. He he like Rooney. They both transitioned to the bullpen at the exact same time last year. So what you like about that is the Dodgers like to be very creative with the roles they use with their relief pitchers. So hey, he might be able to give you a spot start or give you yep. three or four innings at a time, kind of like we saw Ryan Yarbrough do. I think both he and Rooney both could. Could execute that role. I'm just telling you, if you talk to anybody, matter of fact, I have. They call it Mad Town there, Madera, California. They will yeah. tell you he quite possibly is the best three sports star in the history of that, you know, not just Madera, the entire Central Valley. The people wow. back then, every time I post about him, there's like a thousand people that come on and talk about how elite this guy is as far as an athlete, the mentality, and all of that. So, you know, hey, all these guys have talent. A lot of times the differing factors are who has the mental toughness, the mental capacity just to keep yep. waking up every day and keep doing it over and over again. You know this guy has that. He's definitely got that, the story you told. I mean, just to, to never give up. When he, when he, and I've, you've heard that before in college baseball. You know, I'm not mentioning anybody's names, but, you know, some, sometimes these guys just get scholarships pulled from for no reason. 
Well, I mean, there's a reason, but they don't let the players know. And that, that's horrible, you know, for those young men and who, who are chasing those dreams. But luckily for him, he was able to get something done in Fresno. And like I said, being a great athlete, being a wrestler, a footballer, here he is, baseball, you can just – this is a guy that, you know, that, that, that you want your organization. You know, mm-hmm. and hopefully we can keep him and not let him get away from us because so, he, he's – He's got everything it takes to, to succeed there. And he was willing to do anything like Rooney. Hey, I'll be a reliever. I don't care. Whatever. Put me on a major league 40 man roster. Put me, I don't care. I'll, I'll go be a bullpen. You know, I'll throw BP every day. Who cares? Give me a, give me a contract. So yeah, that's those guys. There's tons of them out there. And it's just great to see one here with the Dodgers. And hopefully young man can make it. The next guy we're going to talk about, Mark Washington right here. Wash. I love this guy out of Lehigh. I have two interviews with him. A nice feature article on the young man out of the Allentown, Pennsylvania. So you know he's tough, the Philadelphia yep. area. Anybody comes out of that area, very tough. You also know he's very smart. He went to Episcopal Academy there, which is a you know one of those private schools that's very academic heavy. Then he went to Lehigh, which is which is unbelievably academically heavy. So the Dodgers love these guys that that are you know really high IQ guys because they can kind of mix all of those those different elements that they try to teach them because the Dodgers are very analytical. So those guys always work out well in the system. Six foot seven guys, uh, coach, he has what I call easy power. This is a guy that's 90, 96, 97 on occasion, 98. But look at the extension. Look at those long legs. Look how far he's getting down the mound. So yes, 96, 97, but it's probably looking like 102, 103 to the hitter because he's delivering it so close to home plate. Yeah, I saw him pitch in Oklahoma City this year. I was down close stuff on the field. And he, before he got the game, he walked by and before he goes, like, "Good Lord, who's this guy?" You know, how tall he was. I mean, I knew who he was. I seen him in Tulsa before that too. But I saw him pitch this year in Oklahoma City, and yeah, you're like, you're you're, talk, you're right, easy. I mean, he's just like he's out playing catch, but it's ninety six, yeah. ninety seven, and like I said, the time that hand reaches, he's off on the grass. So he's probably fifty fifty two feet or, le- or less. Away from the hitter when he comes out of his hand, much like Randy Johnson used to be. From yes. side of his, Good you know, comp. He, he's almost up there 46 feet from any time it comes out of his hand. You know, so that's a, that, that's, that's a definitely a bonus for him. But he's a, he's got a good arm. and just a, Like you said, nice and easy. Those guys get better. You know, it's, it's funny. Coming out of there, a lot of times they get better the more they go up. As, we, as we've seen with hitters sometimes, they, they excel more on the major league level than they did in the minor league. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just a different deal. Yeah, they mastered their craft. Thing about him, he went on a really long heater at the beginning of last year. He was just almost well, he wasn't giving up any runs at all. He'd gone like, you know, maybe ten or eleven outings in a row and just had completely dominated. And he was covering first base, pulled his groin, and then he was out for a while and really never recovered from that. Then this year he he got hot again and started get, you know, what he calls heaters, went on another heater then got injured and finished the season on the IL. So this guy, if he's had any kind of luck at all, it's been bad luck in the last two years. Got promoted to AAA Oklahoma City last May. And uh, so, hey, if he can just stay healthy and get a little bit of a run, he again, he is Rule 5 eligible. I would, If I was another team and this guy doesn't get put on the Dodgers 40, man, he would be one of the first guys that I would target because this guy – you know, the change-up is a little bit of work and process, which change-ups always are no matter what because they're such yep. feel-heavy pitches. The slider is very good. So a good three-pitch mix to Mark Washington. Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. He, he'd be a prospect everybody would like that, get their hands on. Yep. So Mark Washington, he is another right-handed reliever in the system, much in the, in, you know, in the form of Gus Varland. You saw how good Gus Varland stuff was last year Mark Washington very good Nick Robertson was another guy that we saw this year got traded away and had a very good finish to his major league season last season with the Boston Red Sox so super excited to see what happens there's Miguel Vargas making a nice play at yep. second base and so hey let's get on to our last guy Ricky Venasco coach I love this guy right here okay so this guy was with the Rangers this time last year. The Rangers DFA'd him. Whenever you get designated for assignment, then you have seven days to trade the guy. So the Dodgers actually got him via trade with the Rangers when, once he got DFA'd. So he came to the, the Dodgers, got put on the 40-man. Then the Dodgers DFA'd him, and so that made him eligible to become a minor leaguer. He started, as you're seeing here, with the AA Tulsa Drillers. 
I reached out to him for an interview, and he was like, hey, man, I'd love to, but right now I'm not really in the mood to talk about the type of season I've had because at that time he had just been DFA'd by the Rangers yep. and the Dodgers. He said, but, hey, you know, sometime in the future I'm just concentrating on, on just getting my stuff together. And from that point on, Coach, his laser – here he is in Triple Oklahoma City. His laser focus was amazing. He went his last 23 outings – and there's Ryan Ward. I love I love that young man. Wardo went to a high school yep. in Massachusetts at Millbury that had less than 100 graduating kids, which I know you, you love because you just came from yep. Fairview. But Venasco, coach, his last 23 outings, look at that slider, one run is all he gave up. One of the most laser-focused human beings I've ever been around. I finally contacted him yesterday. I, I was hoping I'd given enough time for the season to be over. He said he'd love to come on for an interview, so we're going to talk to him next week. Super excited about it. Now, I'd say the guy, that, that tells you a lot you need to know about his makeup, too. I don't really want to talk about it. I don't, I don't have much to talk about. It's going to be positive. You know, he knows what he had a bad year, and he knows what he needs to work on. But then, he, like you said, the way he ended up, God, just watching him throw there. I mean, he, he shows something special. Reach 99. Oh, man. I mean, you can tell. And you just tell that his makeup, he, the bulldog in him. And I keep using that word, but that, especially out of pen. I mean, if you don't have that. Look at that. Beat, first of all, you're not going to make it. Yeah. yeah. Get you some of that on the knees. <laughs> 99. Yeah. And you can just tell he brings it every pitch, you know. Yeah, he I is. I like that kid. Yeah, I, you Coach, I know that, that you have always valued tough – over talented, you know. Hey, at some point you have to have the talent, you know, right? But if yep. you didn't have the talent, you wouldn't be here. <laughs> so That's I, right. you know, I'm not necessarily when you're looking at AAA and you're looking at, at guys at this level, you're looking almost less at talent. You're looking at all the intangibles to see which one, which guys, you know, can can uh, you know just withstand the, the mental grind and, and the pressure of this game. But I'm just telling you, I saw it with my own eyes. This guy squarely was dealing with adversity. He was close. He had some, you know, he he was – that's a slap in the face when you get DFA'd, right? Because yeah, it's so exciting yes. to get on the 40-man. Then you get taken off of it. You're DFA'd. It's a slap in the face. It pisses you off. It's upsetting. It's disappointing. It is adversity, man, and it kicked his ass in gear. Well, it, it, it's it's somebody giving up on you. Are yeah. You know, you know, I mean, basically, we, we don't want you. I mean, heck yeah, you're going to be ticked off, you know? You know, I mean, and, and you're ready to show somebody they were wrong, you know? And you can tell this guy here, he's ready to prove, hey, you guys screwed up, you know? You missed you missed your chance. So, I, I just like, I mean, he, he brings it. You can see every pitch. Yeah. I mean, God, I mean, he's, just, he's got everything going into it. And, Great mechanics. Yeah. Straight over yep. the top. It looks like he can just repeat that every single delivery. Yeah. Yeah, he just comes over and lets her rip. He's not, not not taking easy on anybody. Like I said, that's the thing about everybody. Let me, let me show you this, Coach. This slider right here. Look how much, let you know, just from between the – let me go back up two pitches. Watch his fastball, okay, right here. Watch his fastball delivery, and then watch how he delivers his slider. I mean, it is the exact – This that's yeah. a fastball there. Yep. I think it's next pitch, the slider here. It's the exact – that right there. I mean, how do you do, <laughs> how do you tell the difference if you're a hitter? <laughs> You you can. It's like Gatlin the other night coming in for the D base. That ain't Gatlin or Garden come in, got up. You know, Schwarber, Schwarber, Turner, and Harper, none of them had a chance. And it's all yeah. sliders. I think every pitch was a slider. And most of them are out of the zone. And he hit them all up. So, yeah, if you get the same delivery and you get the fastball and, and the slider looks the same coming out of the hand. Like I said, everybody, pretty much everybody in double A AA or triple A, they're not on that level if they don't have talent. Case yeah. you mentioned that a minute ago. Yeah, they're there because they got talent. So That's exactly not, what I was talking. You're saying exactly you great way to put it. Yeah, we know you got talent. You wouldn't be here. You you would never make it this level. You didn't have talent. Now, like you said, now what are you going to do from here on? You know, now 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 what? You know, what are you going to do now? You know, what 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 if? You know, so that's right now where the guys established that. Some guys go quickly, which we've seen with the Dodgers. From Tulsa to LA, you know, some guys go from back and forth Tulsa to Oklahoma City, and then they find their niche, and and some guys never get out of there. You know? mm -hmm. They're there because they got talent. There's, there's certainly not lack of talent. And this is when the guys prove to the big club, if not the Dodgers, somebody else is watching too. They're all watching. You know, that, that's a guy we'll go after if they don't put him on the forty man. So yeah, well, and the thing is, is he was DFA'd this last year, so I don't think he's Rule Five eligible. 
Don't okay. quote me on that. I, I've talked to Austin about that, who is my go-to guy on those things, on all, all things that have to do with contracts or, or rules like that. And neither one of us think he's actually eligible for the Rule 5. Okay. Because he was DFA'd, he'd already been on a 40-man this past season. That He's gotten taken off that 40-man with the DFA assignment. And so I don't actually think he is Rule 5 eligible. So I do think the Dodgers are going to keep him. And I think that is why – he has a really, really great chance at making the major leagues this next season, at least in some capacity. Yeah. Hopefully it's with us. You know, hope it's with the Dodgers, <laughs> yeah. not with somebody else. Yep. No doubt about it. Okay, so he's ready. He looks ready. Yep. Looks John ready. Rooney, Alec Gamboa, Mark Washington, Ricky Venasco, coach. Final thoughts. I mean, it's not shocking the Dodgers have that type of talent on the, you know, in, in the minor leagues. We just mentioned it before. Historically, they have that type. You know, they're, they're loaded in the in the minor leagues, and these are you know four guys that a lot of fans haven't heard about. Yes, you, know? you, you have because you 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 study this every day, and and Dodger fans kind of I've heard the names because I'm a Dodger fan, but you know we we've heard you know the Gavin Stone, Emmett Sheehan, you, know, you hear all those and the other guys who who've got a. Somebody got a cup of coffee this year in the major leagues. But here's the other guys. And these guys are just right there. They're in the next step. They're ready to go. You know, so I, I like them all. You know, you, of course, that's the way I am. You know, they're, they're talented and they're, they're Dodgers and they're willing to play. Give them all their shots. See what they do. Yeah, give them a shot. And see what they – absolutely. You know, and you, know, you always tell them, how, how do you want to know if he can do it if we don't ever give him a chance, you know? It's like a first-year coach or teacher. Well, you don't have any experience. Yeah, I, no, I need you know, give me a chance, and we'll see what happens. So, same way with players, they just they just want a shot. And, you know, if I don't make it, I'll try it again or whatever. You know, those baseball players are especially minor. This is so unique to every other sport. You know, because they have to work up through the minor leagues. You know, Matt Holliday worked yeah. up through the minor leagues, changed his body, became, you know, a weightlifter. He's already a talented young man. That's one that we can all relate to because we've seen him grow on two eyes. But those guys, you know, baseball is so unique. These guys have to work their way into big leagues. They don't care who your dad is. They don't care you, who, where you come from. Can you play or not? You know, that's yep. how you get to the big leagues. Can you bring something to our team? So, you know, NFL – we draft you, you're probably going to get, unless you're just horrible, you're probably going to be at least special teams or something. Yep. Same way with the NBA. You know, well, we may have you go across the street and play D-League, but you yep. may, and you may go back and forth. But you're not very far away from the NBA arena. Baseball, sitting in uh, Lewiston, Idaho, or wherever, I don't know where it's at, but you, know, <laughs> you just go anywhere, you know, where, where all these uh, low Class A teams are. You're a long way from the big leagues. Long you know, ways. A long ways, and, and, and that's why it's so unique with baseball players. Uh, they have to work to get to where they are. Not that the you know you, footballers and basketballers don't either, but they're closer to the pinnacle when when they when start. They start their yeah. Baseball players, for the most part, you know, unless you're coming out of a high level college guy like Schwarber and some of those guys in Incavilla who went straight to the big leagues, but that's very rare. Uh, they're, they're all putting the time in and working. So that's what makes it, why we love baseball, Casey. I mean, the, the mentality that it takes to make it to the to the biggest biggest stage and it's just great to watch these these kids do this, and I know you get to talk to them a lot on the interviews. Mm-hmm. I know that's exciting. I watch them, and you can just see it in their eyes, man. They're they're hungry, you know. And that that's a beautiful part about those minor leaguers. Uh, they they haven't arrived yet, but they want it. And, yep. and that's 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 a great sign. Got several set up. One of one of them I'm really excited about. You mentioned mm-hmm. that you know, hey, the lineage of Jared Karos next week, yep. the son of Eric Karos, who just had a, just a tremendous end to 2023 so super excited about that going to talk to the Dodgers number one draft pick from last draft Kendall George have that set up have an interview set up with Joe Vetrano a couple of the coaches in the minor league levels one from Great Lakes who can talk about all the great players at Great Lakes with Dave Anderson another one that was with Rancho Dylan Nashatka going to talk to him about all of that so some really super exciting interviews coming up so make sure and look for that Wanted to make sure and give these guys plenty of time to decompress after the season. Didn't want to hit them up till about three weeks out. I know the first two weeks, typically speaking, it's sit around the pool, drink a beer, and just relax. Did not want to bother them during that period. Wanted to make sure I gave them plenty of time. Did that and got some good responses, so super excited about that. Coach, I hope you enjoyed the prospect talk today. I did. And I'm going to have to watch all your interviews with our with our uh, Class A managers and stuff. And, of course, Dave Anderson, I love that guy. 
when he played for the Dodgers. But I have to watch your interview because I have to take some notes. I got to do my homework now. So, you know, I'm all about the Dodgers, but I'm I'm at the dig a little deeper and get on these prospects. And I'm looking forward to that part of kind of, and I have some more time to do that case. So I'm, I'm ready for it. So. All right. Very, we're going to do this every Friday. We're going to have a theme like today's theme was, was relief pitchers that we think have a, especially lefties with, with the Gamboa and, and Rooney, but relief pitchers that we think have a chance of an ETA of 2024. So we're going to have a theme to it every Friday. So looking forward to that. So, hey, fans, hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that, uh, you know, you continue to come back. Dodgers Daily continues to grow. We thank you for that. Coach Holt, you've been a big part of that. So super excited about all that. Don't forget to leave a like on this video. Don't forget to, you know, interact with it. Hit that algorithm for YouTube. That way it gets suggested more. It gets viewed more and we can continue to grow. So until next time. Thank you for tuning in and go Dodgers.